I want to just go over the project with everybody briefly and then talk about just some of the parameters for the meeting and also the time frame. So if you give me just one second here, I'm actually going to share my screen and, and it may do something funky on your layout. It may make your Zoom shrink up or expand if it does. Um, don't, don't flip out. So. So first, real quick, I want to talk about today's meeting, and, and I already mentioned Jackson and, and California Skate Parks, and you'll also see some of our other staff in the meeting here, Kristen Riansko, who's our Deputy Director of Community Services, uh, Brittany Sally Mua, and Kate Gallo are also behind the scenes, you'll see their names, but most likely not their faces unless there's some kind of major uh, issue where we need them to get on. Um, if Kristen and I pass out, we might ask them to lead the meeting. But, um, you know, real quick, I, like I said, I mentioned California Skate Parks is our expected design, is our design consultant for this meeting. Um, the meeting is expected to take 60 to 90 minutes, and it will really depend on just how the discussion goes. So we do have another meeting at 6 p.m. So we will wrap this meeting no later than 5.30. So when we start to get close to that time, if um, there's still a lot of conversation and, and, and and comments and, and discussion with Jackson, I'll chime in and just say, hey, we've got about 10 minutes and let everybody know uh, that we're running short on time. And we don't do that to limit you. We just wanna make sure that um, everybody gets a chance to talk and then we're ready to go for our next meeting. So um, during the discussion, we're gonna give each person uh, two to three minutes to speak. And so after the presentation from Jackson, which will be right after I finish talking here, um, we'll open it up for comment and we'll essentially give you a few minutes to talk about uh, the design, what you think about the layout of the skate park, um, just in some of the basic terms. This is our first meeting. So, um, you know, it's kind of a blank canvas here. We're going to show you some ideas and some thoughts and then kind of have it expand from there. So once we get to that public comment, um, we'll start calling names off for, for everybody that's in the meeting to, to have some time to talk. And then if we have additional time at the end of the meeting, we'll allow additional questions and follow up. So um, that'll depend on, on how far we get into the meeting and how much time we have left. But when we get to that portion, we'll ask people to raise their hands uh, through Zoom so, we, so that we can allow you to talk. So briefly, this is a, just a the layout of the parcel itself. And I think most people here are familiar with the temporary skate park, which is shown in gray, in the area in gray. And then the plan for this project is to put the permanent skate park in the area that's yellow over on the right side of the map. So I wanna be really, really clear as we, as we do this, um, this project, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that the permanent skate park will be this entire yellow portion of the property. That's a, a massive part of the property. It's just that the skate park is expected to go somewhere within this yellow section. And so uh, once we have the skate park in, we'll also have some parking, which we anticipate will be where the temporary skate park is now, and then potentially, potentially in that center area too. So just so everybody knows, if you're not familiar, that's kind of the overall general plan for this. Uh, but again, the yellow part just represents the area that the skate park will be within, not, not that whole area. So as we move forward with the design, we expect this design timeframe to take about six months. And what you're going to see as we wrap up this meeting is later this week, there's actually going to be a community survey that goes out and that will be posted on our website. And so when the community survey does go out, it'll be open for about five to six weeks and I'll get you an exact date. It'll be on the website. But um, what will happen is it's essentially your chance to follow up on the feedback that we get from this meeting. And so um, you'll see that on our website no later than Friday. And then moving forward from there, we'll have our second design meeting after we wrap up that community survey and process the results. We'll have a second design meeting later this year. And then, of course, it will go to various councils and commissions for their feedback and review. So. Uh, Parks and Recreation Commission, Public Works Commission, or Planning Commission, and of course, City Council. So uh, once that is complete, we expect um, this process to take somewhere around six months. So we're hopeful that in the early part of 2021, we'll be finished with the design part of the, the process 
and then we'll move forward to the build portion of the process. So um, we're not quite certain when that will start yet because we believe we'll most likely have to do some fundraising unless the skate park ends up being about half the cost that, that we expect it to be, which I don't think that's probably gonna be the case. Um, so we'll have to do some fundraising and make sure we know where we are financially moving the skate park forward. And so we'll start as soon as we have that, that fundraising portion complete or we have a good idea of what we're doing and start moving forward from there. And so we expect the build to take about a year with the skate park potentially opening in 2022, assuming there are no, no big issues. So finally, before I officially turn it over to Jackson, um, I wanna just like talk a little bit about the community survey. Uh, additionally, if you have comments after this meeting, you can, you can put those comments in the community survey, but you can also send comments directly by email to the email address that's shown there, which is skatepark at malibucity.org. And we prefer that you do the survey because what we'll do is we'll end up entering that information into the survey. So the survey is your best option, but if you just can't figure it out or you need to let us know something directly, you can email that, you can email your comments to that, that address. I mentioned our second design meeting, which will be in late, late 2020. And that will be after the community survey is complete. And then the various commissions and councils we talked about. So my point of showing you all these again is just to let you know that there are going to be a lot of opportunities for you to provide feedback, give us direction on things. And while the purpose of these design meetings is to get a thought on what elements you want to see in the skate park, the layout, the design, um, there's going to be other opportunities for you to weigh in. So I just wanted to be upfront and clear. This is not the only time you're going to be able to tell us what you want. And, and so we'll, we'll have lots of opportunities for that. So with that, I'd like to bring in Jackson um, from California Skate Parks and, and we'll actually flip and let him share his screen. And like I said, if there's, if there's any questions you have following the meeting, um, you will see, you can, you can find all of this information on malibucity.org slash skate park. And I would really urge everybody here to, to go to that website frequently because we do update that with information whenever it's available. So uh, with that, Jackson, take it away. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Let's see if I can grab it. Okay. Cool. Um, well, I first just want to thank everybody for showing up and participating. I think it's this is a really huge example or opportunity for everybody to have a voice. There's not as many people decided to participate in this. And that kind of just means that you have an even bigger opportunity to impact what we're going to do. Um, so for me, I kind of just wanted to explain what our role is going to be. I mean, for us at California Skate Parks, we're really here to facilitate this, this process. It's not our skate park, it's your skate park. So I'm really interested in hearing what everybody has to say. And uh, like Jesse mentioned, we have a survey also, um, and we're going to show a couple concepts that we can get into and talk about. Um, the main purpose of even doing the concepts, because uh, I just want to make it really clear that we don't really have to choose between A or B, or just say, you know, I kind of vote on one or the other. We really came up with these just to show you an example of the size that we're looking at. There was a environmental impact report that was done for the space. And basically we've been told that we have 12,500 square feet of skate park that we can develop within this site. So knowing kind of that parameter, we're gonna do everything we can to maximize that space and get the most out of, uh, out of the skate park. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and I'll show kind of some examples. You know, this is a little bit different and harder doing this kind of Zoom style instead of being able to stand around and actually look and talk to stuff together. I know we do have the hand raise feature. I don't mind being interrupted. I think we have a lot of time if we, if we end up on something and it seems worth um, stopping and talking about or if afterwards you wanna go back and look at anything, I'm happy to do any of that. I mean, really this is, uh, it's your project, it's your park, I'm just here to help out. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna get it going. Uh, just a little bit about California skate parks. I don't know, some of you may have heard of us, some of you may have not. We've, we've 
I've done a lot of different projects, uh, both municipal like this. And we also do Vans Park Series and Street League and do tour. Um, I think a lot of people tend to think, uh oh, like for some people that's exciting. For some people it's scary. It's like, I don't really want Street League or I don't want Vans Park Series. Um, I bring this up mostly just because I want you to know that we can do anything you want. We don't have a specific brand that we're pushing of skate park. We want to do whatever we think is best for the city of Malibu. Um, here's just some examples. Woodward Plaza, obviously a full blown street plaza here. Um, and even this one is a little bit older now. This is Linda Vista Skate Park down near where I live. I have a combination, but I know that even just looking at like in this middle area here is a, not part of the skate park, but this is a detention area that captures all the water. This will be something that we'll deal with in the Malibu site and something that you'll see kind of in the concepts that are coming up later. Um, but really this is just a be looking at stuff or thinking about things. Are, are there ideas that you have or types of features that you want or skate spots. It's another example, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma along Snake Run here that goes through the park and then kind of just a, some street plaza features. There's a backyard bowl in the back. This is uh, Lake Havasu Skate Park, flow course with some jump boxes. This is really just to get some thoughts flowing. It's like a competition bowl here, but a lot of these you know, are skated by skaters of all different levels. But again, just to be thinking about looking at different features, another pure plaza style. And then this is a little more of just like kind of a standard skate park that has a little bit of everything. Um, when we, we have some of this up here, this is really just to help out when we get the, the survey that we have, it's basically a Google doc and you can go on there and you click and it's gonna have a lot of images and pictures and ask, ask about types of features, rails, ledges, um, stairs for street stuff. And then for tranny, it's gonna be square pockets, round pockets, depths, um, hips, whatever. So some of these are just to get some ideas of, just know that this is a little bit related to what is in the survey, um, kind of asking about the types of features, what you prefer. Often when we do a skate park like this, you know, we kind of assume that what we're gonna end up with at the end is something that offers a little bit for everybody. There's gonna probably be some transition features, some street stuff. I would be surprised if we went all the way only in one direction. Um, one of the things that we kind of focus on uh, on our end is just making sure the spacing is right, the heights of things. So it works for a variety of different ages and ability levels, or if you come to the skate park, you wanna be able to learn on something smaller and progress to something bigger. And the park needs to have stuff so that if you wanna keep coming back day after day, you also need to be able to show up for the first time ever at a certain point and not have any skills and be able to start somewhere. So those are some of the things that we are going to be, you know, making sure that just it's kind of well-rounded and offers stuff for everyone. Some more. Okay. So yeah, this is like Jesse said, the site here, um, the 12,500 square feet. <clears throat> this is a plan view of one of the concepts and just to get a sense of scale, you can kind of see the whole outline of the space that Jesse was referring to and how much we're taking up. You can also see that there's kind of some landscaping areas throughout in here. And that's um, mainly for us to try and stretch the skate park bigger to, to make more space. When we are talking about the 12,500 square feet, we don't have to count these landscaping areas. That's not part of the concrete, it's not part of um, the requirement that we're going with. So it just kind of helps to make a little bit more of the skate park. And then like I was talking about earlier um, in that other example, we end up using some of these areas to capture water, to clean it and to return it back um, to the source. Um, so 
like I said, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to be going back and forth between these two concepts. Just for a little bit of context, what we did with the two versions that we came up with is we basically did one that was heavier on the street, which is this version, more of a street plaza than the other version that I'm going to show. Um, but once again, we wanted to have some mix. We, we're showing a backyard bowl in both versions because this is kind of a cool opportunity as there's a gradual slope here to put this on its own and it will be kind of in the hillside with the water in the background. A backyard bowl like this also doesn't take up a ton of space. So we're able to do it along with a lot of other features. Um, and let's see, I'll just go through some of the things in here. I mean, you probably don't need me to tell you a lot of the stuff you can tell what's going on, but like I mentioned before, um, we're focusing on variety and making sure that there's the ability to progress. So we wanna have different size stair sets, different size rails, different size quarter pipes and banks. There's some pool coping, <clears throat> some deeper transition, the backyard bowl, some more intermediate. This one has a little micro mini ramp up at the entryway. You can't see that well here, but this is still a nice like 24 foot wide, uh, small mini ramp section with some ledges, seven stair, uh, five stair with the hubba, A-frame, hip, and then kind of still has a flatland area with a long ledge, some smaller rails, kicker gap, bump to rail, and then just some different ledges on the outside, kind of a mailbox feature is in here, pole jam. Um, there's kind of like a unique transition piece here in the <clears throat> this kind of bold pocket area. That's another thing that you could be thinking about if there's something sculptural or different or anything that we think could be unique to the Malibu skate park, something that when you look at it, you, you know that it's that park. If you have any ideas like this of things that you, you know, think could help identify, or, I mean, we can, we can, the opportunities are limitless. Um, I see a hand up. Should I, I can run through the second concept real quick and then we can basically just get into it and everybody can Go yeah, or... we'll we'll actually want to make sure that we do that during the comment period. So if, if you have your hand up, we'll we'll come back to whatever slide you need and answer whatever questions you have or or address the comment. So um, if you could just bear with us until Jackson wraps up, and then we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's there's step up gaps in here. I mean, really, and then there's kind of some other just little mini spots that we're trying to mix in throughout. <clears throat> um, that's kind of the gist. Concept A is concept B. This one, uh, like I said, is heavier on transition. So it kind of uses, utilizes the uh, other half of the park over here for more of like uh, a snake run, mini ramp area with a lot of hips, different elevations, different size tranny, still has a bold pocket bigger extension kind of opposing there, still has layback bank, different size stairs and ledges and the hubbas, um, still with a backyard bowl. So we can talk about different shapes or even if the backyard bowl isn't something that is gonna be on anybody's wish list or popular, there's other things we can do. Uh, like I said, when we have the 12,500 square feet, we're really just trying to get the most that we can out of it, the most types of features, the most different um, obstacles we can get. So this has a standard stair set, double set, bumped rails, some down rails, still with the grind over, some flat ledges and stuff in the entryway. Um, we actually have some signage on here for the Malibu skate park there. Um, and then these are, oops, I kind of skipped ahead, but this is just kind of once we can go back just so you can have some side-by-side -side comparisons here. You can see kind of the heavier street influence with the mini ramp up top and kind of an all flow transition area on one side versus kind of a little more plaza throughout just kind of with integrated transition rather than having more separate areas. 
This is another kind of comparison shot. Showing the differences here. Um, and those are the two concepts. So I think with that, we can just go ahead and start hearing from everybody if they have comments or questions or wish list items. Um, and also just keep in mind, these images will be in the uh, survey that we provide. So in the questionnaire, these pictures are in there. So you'll be able to compare and it'll ask you, you know, I look kind of like this, I would prefer more transition or I kind of like that, I would prefer more street or you can just give your own specific comments. You can write stuff out. Um, so this will be available and up on the website to look at and, you know, go through it some more if you want to and everything. But really, we I think what we wanna do is use this time to hear from everybody and hear what your thoughts are, what, you're, what you would like to see, what you'd like to get out of the skate park. Um, what do you think, Jesse? Should, can we yeah, open um, it up? so what we can do is, um, Brittany, if you want to um, just start at the top of your list that you have, um, go ahead and just call the first couple names. And as we go here, um, if you don't want to speak, just pop on and say, hey, I don't have any comment other than what's been said. However, um, the time to kind of just provide your thought and tell us what you think is now. So, Britt, if you want to start the start reading names, that would be great. Sure. So first up, we will have Max up and then followed by Brody. Max, did you want to speak? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, for concept A, that's like the most flowy street skate park I've ever seen. That looks so sick. That, that actually looks so much fun. Glad to hear it. Yeah, and like, I feel like I would never get bored with concept A. I mean, concept B is still pretty sick, but I feel like there's a lot more to do on, on A. Yeah, that's it. Thank we'll watch you. your work to get the presentation up on the screen here. So I think we can keep track of the time on our own um, so that we can see the presentation while we're talking. Give us just one second here. And is Brody here? Brody, did you want to speak? I like concept A. Jackson, I don't know okay. if you can share the screen back or not. Here. Okay, let me see. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, we're back. Okay, and Jody. Jody is up next, followed by Jason. Um, I don't really, I mean, I like concept A too, because my kids do, so that's really. <laughs> Okay, thank I you. Also, I also, real quick, will say, um, while I know we're, we're presenting some concepts here, feel free to let us know, you know, if there's something you don't like about it or you might want to add or adjust or, or make different. Like this, it's, this looks really great. And yes, that would be very great. But the point is for us, we want to hear what you want, what you like and don't like about these concepts so that we can adjust them. So um, gosh, I know Dakota, you got to have some comments on this. Um, based on our temporary skate park design meetings, not to call you out, but we'll, we'll just make sure you let us know what you're thinking specifically versus just, oh, I like the design. Feel free to let it rip. Tell us what you want. Um, is Jason here? Oh, is that just my other screen? Oh, no, I have Jason Gorson. Jody is mm. Jason? No, okay. All right. Um, next up, we have Zach Moskowitz, followed by Lauren Polito. So, Zach, did you have anything? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Um, so I love both concepts. They're really great. Concept A has plenty of street, but I also feel like it has plenty of flow as well. So I'd probably go with A because it's got the best of both worlds. Um, and I love that long flat bar. Yeah, that thing looks awesome. 
Um, and then when I was skating the temporary park yesterday around sunset, um, if I were to be looking, standing in the park, looking back at the entrance, there was like a super bad uh, glare from the sun. So it was like super hard to see looking back. So I see you guys added some trees near the entrance. Uh, if you flip back one sl slide, you can see. So if there were some trees where the sun goes down, mm. more towards like, yeah, where the entrance of the skate park is, then that would help out a lot with people skating that way without their sun in their eyes. Um, and then that would be like a, a big help for us. And then also the backyard bowl is pretty sweet. I would love to see some mosaic tile or something similar to what the Adamson house has in Malibu. Uh, there's some really classic Malibu uh, art and tiles that stemming from that house. So it would be sweet to see some of that culture kind of living in this skate park. And I love the blue colored steel is awesome. And I think Constant A has a ton of flow. So that's my vote. Thank you, Zach. Cool, thank you, Zach. Lauren. I saw her. There we go. Yeah. Layla and Axel, Lauren, if you want to unmute you... your computer, you yeah. can you can talk. There we go. There we go. We like both of the concepts a lot, but I think we like A a little more. Yeah, I like A a little more than B. Um, mostly because um, concept A has has like two sides to it. It has a place where it's for, there's a beginner place. There's a little, both me mediocre. And then there's an advanced place and there's also a bowl. So uh, it's pretty good in my case, so. Good variety. Layla, did you have anything to add? No? Okay. Heather, I saw you. There we go. Um, okay, go ahead. Dakota. I like concept A a little bit better because I feel like it's more even with like bowl and street. And I feel like with concept B, there's like a lot more bowl than street in that part. Um, yeah, I like concept A more. Are there any donuts? Like concept A is a lot, like what Max said, it looks really like flowy and everything looks really good. Um, hi, I'm Dakota's mom. I just also wanted to know what the dimensions of the bowl was, like how deep the bowl was and would you consider it like a beginner, intermediate, advanced bowl? So the bowl that, let's see to make sure I'm not muted. Um, the bowl that we have in here is <clears throat> kind of like what we call a skate park backyard bowl. Okay. So they're a little bit friendlier. They're not quite as, they don't have quite as much vert as um, some bigger backyard bowls or like real pools. You know, like a true pool is a little bit harsher. So a bowl like this would be around eight feet deep, maybe a, a little bit more. And then the shallow end is typically around five and a half to six feet deep. But these okay. are, you know, this is just an example. So if those yeah. types of specifics are something that yeah. you have an opinion on, we'd, we'd love yeah. to hear what. I definitely think for sure, like something that kids who are beginning kind of feel a little comfortable in, but we also want like, there's a lot of um, kids in Malibu that are, you know, they're really passionate about skateboarding and they're, some of them are in middle school, you know, they're pretty young still. And just to give them a space to really make sure that they can advance in their skills and not feel like, oh, well, I've kind of achieved that already. There's not much more for me here. You know, that's just a concern. Mm -hmm. Just a, something I'd like to say. And also, um, 
the there's two parks. Um, if you I don't know if you're familiar with San Luis Obispo and also Mammoth, they have these, what are they called? The, where they go up and kind of almost like the half circle that you can go up in and go around. What are those called? They're kind of like a cradle. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, like they yeah, have cradle. almost like a wave, a which I think would be amazing um, for a park in Malibu to have like, like a, a, um, Oververt a bowl you can almost yeah. skate up yeah. and into, like, you know? So it like feels- Like kind of oververt, like at Mammoth Park, there's like this big cradle and at San Luis Obispo Park, like the transition like goes over almost like a wave into oververt. Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking really about. Cool. Yeah. Those are really fun and it seems the like- The mammoth yeah. one is gigantic. Yeah. yeah. No, anyway, <laughs> just some thoughts. So thank you so much for cool. everything. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Trevor and then Sean. Trevor, if you can unmute, please. Yeah, hi. You guys hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Trevor from Champ Camp. Um, just, I mostly wanted to say I appreciate the uh, the city for moving forward and doing all this work, given the times and um, California skate parks, the approach of um, having something for everybody is super cool. And, uh, <clears throat> You know, concept A, as everyone is saying, with um, having some street and transition and beginner area is um, is pretty cool. Um, one question regarding like a, like a flat area, um, maybe there's something towards the entrance, but for beginners to work on, uh, you know, just who are, kids who are skating flat, like taking a break from the park, is there something mm-hmm. like that? Yeah, we did. I mean, actually, the uh can see a little bit here in the plan view. <clears throat> um, the whole entry area is all flat and it has a couple different size ledges and they're kind of more beginner size. So we, we we're doing, we we're making these two each different so that you can have something different to skate there and then having kind of a small half pipe area like if you wanted to skate around or skate flat land before, you know, kind of going into the main park. So there is an area to skate some flat stuff. And the, this middle section is um, all one elevation across here. Cool. So at least is some flat ledge, some flat stuff in there also. Awesome. Love it. Thank you for everything. Thanks for the comments. Hi. You guys hear me okay? Okay, cool. Hey, uh, so I, I, first caveat, I'm, I'm not a skater. My son has been learning. He's 13. He's here. He's just hiding. Um, but uh, we, we've been going to the Oxnard, um, the uh, Bedford Park a lot. And the one thing I see, I think A is, is probably the winner out of, out of the two options. But um, question about um, general uh, space, as far as you guys are limited to how big this thing can be. But like, if we want to have any areas for benches, for parents, for whoever's going to be hanging out so they're not in the way of the kids. Would that be in the sort of, uh, what you have is the sort of DG area right now, the kind of outside area, the, the dirt? Is that where we'd have like benches or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Jesse, do you want to speak about that or? Yeah, so what this is, you know, with this being the design, I know that uh, what happens a lot of times is um, you know, we'll kind of get the design down and figure out the direction we're going, and then we'll try and find areas where we can place seating and, and make sure that it's effective and 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 appropriate in the appropriate area. So, uh, yes, we would definitely this the the benches and the seating and, and that type of stuff is not a, a part of the skatable area itself, but it okay. is something that we will absolutely add in. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't know, count against it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's no, cool. unless it's in in like the skatable area, what's considered the actual skate park, it wouldn't. Um, yeah. And one thing I'll say is that you know, looking at this design, and and I think one thing people get hung up on this exactly how it looks, and the reality is, you know, there there will almost certainly be, uh, not, not certainly, there will certainly be changes to to where the landscape is and how it fits because we have lots of. Um, different rules we'll have to follow, you know, related to the EIR and making sure that we're putting in measures that are in the EIR, but also, you know, fall in line with the skate park too. So I know a lot of that's done for decoration at this point, 
so there will be changes and things like that, whether it be landscape or benches um, sure. or different. I just wanted to make like sure that, that any, any seating that was going to be added wasn't going to encroach on no. the space we have, but it would be kind of outside. Um, the only other thing is, so Joaquin, who's he's here, Joaquin, come here. <laughs> I wouldn't see it. So he, he was just saying about a little more variation in bowl height, but I'm looking at this and I, I mean, my only question would be based on that, his concern is that area at the very kind of the, the kind of outlet of this bowl, you keep going up, uh, it gets to the sort of flat area now to the left. Over here. Yeah, there. So it, it, is that, is that, would that be possible to kind of like, what if we had a little bit more of a continuation or a rounding of a bowl or a shallower bowl or something there that would mm -hmm. kind of preserve some energy so kids could kind of come up and hit that corner and come back around and they wanted to kind of double back. Right now, it feels like they would come out of that and really kind of be dead. They'd have to like do something else and do the skate, do the street stuff and not be able to kind of keep going around. The Oxstar one has a little more of that kind of, you have a little more um, options. Like a shallow like in here or something to. Maybe, yeah. And then, and then so you, you have like a, another variation in sort of bowl height, like maybe a little more of a beginner bowl height or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's pretty much it. I, I, this is really great and really cool to see. And, and I uh, echo uh, the last guy. He, the, it's really great. Thank you everyone for, for putting this together and, and, and beginning all this plan. So it's cool. We appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Next up, we have Scott Gillen followed by Don Schmidt. Hi. So one, I think it looks really cool. I'm not a skater and I, I have no idea what all these kids are talking about when they talk about street or this or that. I know what a bowl is, so, uh, but I'll learn all this before we're done with this design process. But I, I'm not really going to comment about design because again, I'm not a skater and I'm not going to use it. And, and my daughter uh, is not a skater either. But I guess my question is, which most of the kids are probably unaware, Jesse, as you're unaware, and, and Jason, so it, it, does it matter where the bowl is? So the bowl closest to the street, does it matter that the bowl is there? You don't, you don't get going and then jump in there. You just come off the edge and jump down into it. Is that correct? You do like not, you don't need, yeah. You don't need, you the don't bowl need speed. The bowl can be isolated. <laughs> but you don't need speed to jump into there, right? No. Okay. So I guess my, my question would be, can that be positioned so it lessens the impact of noise? farther away from the house, you know, the house, house five. And, and, uh, and the rest of it, it just looks cool. I mean, I don't, I, I, if we get anywhere near this, I mean, I would, I think I would be pretty happy with, you know, I mean, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but so I'm, I'm only in, interested in this as an impact the five homes. Um, the design is, is, is up to the kids and up to you guys, because you know better than, than I would ever know. I'm just, uh, I'm just, making sure i would like to make sure that the visual impact is is protected and the noise impact is protected so if the bowl could be flipped to the other side you know up uh, who's got the mouse if they can go up to the uh to the far left corner a little bit more to the left to the left uh, right in that area there instead of that that planned area then it's the then the bowl which i assume and i could be totally wrong what generates the most noise if you're skating where does the moist where does the where does the uh the most amount of noise come from in the park overall? The bowl, uh, in general, transition skating is not going to be particularly noisy. Um, the, the bowl, almost all the activity is, is contained in there. And because it's deep, it's, it's kind of down in there. Um, you know, street skating, where if somebody is jumping stairs and grinding rails, I think would maybe be slightly more. We've actually done some noise studies that we'd be happy to share with. Uh, but the good thing is that with a concrete skate park like this, it, the noise is pretty dampened. It's nothing like even wood or metal, like even a wood skate park, like the one there has a metal kick plate, things like that are, and when they're all above ground, it's, it tends to be a lot noisier than a skate park like this is. Um, the positioning of the bowl in this case is mostly because we wanted to be able to take advantage of uh, viewing with a bowl being 
you know, six, five, six, and eight feet deep, like we were talking about, it's tough to get a vantage in. And when we move it down the slope slightly, it makes even like some of these grassy areas and the, and the areas around the perimeter of the bowl um, give you a little bit of elevation to, to kind of see the action. Um, but I think it would be, if you were concerned, you could visit a skate park and listen to what's happening in a bowl. I, I don't think that you would find that they're particularly um, noisy okay, well, if the, within a park. If, so if the noise is not an issue, then I think the placement of the bowl is cool because if it's down there and there's nothing beyond it, and if they're skating, this one wants to grab any pictures, which are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. The whole ocean's really in cool. the background, so it's pretty awesome if they're in the totally. midair and I like that. Okay. So I just, those are my only thoughts. And obviously we'll, we'll, you know, I'll be looking at, at the, at the height of these projections, but I mean, overall, I think it's great and, and uh, it looks cool. It's not what I envisioned at all. I'm, I'm happy to see this, whether it be a concept A and or concept B. Okay. I think Don's up next. Don, if you have any comments. I do. Thank you. Uh, again, Don Schmitz, I represent the case, the uh, adjacent neighborhood that donated the property. I want to start off by uh, stating that they're very supportive of this. Uh, it's a fantastic concept for our kids. I also have to say on a personal note, uh, when my kids were going to Our Lady of Malibu, if the skate park had been here, you guys would have saved me a whole lot of miles and time uh, schlepping them around to different places. So it's, it's fantastic to see this uh, coming together. I'm gonna to leave it to the uh, experts um, that have already spoken, uh, especially the ones that are ranging between nine to 15 years old. And uh, by the way, it's not cool, it's sick. Uh, so I'm trying to keep with the times in regards to using the right terminology. Uh, I do wanna point out that um, in the planning that has transpired to date, which made this a reality, which was the environmental impact report, and uh, Jesse, I heard you uh, mention that before, and, and you too, Jackson, that uh, uh, all the different components, uh, they come together that allowed this uh, project to be analyzed under the California Environmental Quality Act were addressed. Um, and, and that is something that we need to be mindful of. And one of the most specific criteria uh, to maintain the, com uh, the compatibility with the skate park and with the adjacent neighborhood was that the skate park would be subterranean. Uh, not subterranean like a basement, but it would be below grade. And uh, obviously this uh, reflects that in the design. So, uh, you know, the, the kids are dropping in, um, they're, they're hitting the bowls, they're hitting the, the ramps and whatnot. But one thing that I think we need to be cognizant of is some of these higher, oh, and I'll just completely screw it up if I try to give them the proper names, the walls, the drop-ins, the snake ramp, all these different things, which are essential for them to get the velocity, to get the adrenaline rush and really, do all the tricks and such. Uh, we need to be careful that we're not designing those so that those are projections uh, up above grade. And then, you, you know, we got some pretty big kids in town. So where you got a five foot 10, six foot tall plus uh, kid up there, I mean, he's, he's gonna be way up into the skyline. And so the intent from the environmental impact report that approved the project in the first instance was that the entire uh, project, the skate park would be below grade. So I'd ask you to be mindful of that in regards to uh, the overall layout of the project of the skate park. Uh, all that being said, uh, another couple considerations might be some, some landscaped berms and stuff to uh, uh, provide additional sound attenuation and, uh, and, and uh, privacy uh, between the skate park and the residents, which are gonna be right next door. It's a, it's a beautiful design, way overdue from Malibu. And I really wanna tip my hat to everybody that's been involved with this effort. Appreciate the feedback. And that is all of our speakers. Real quick, I know um, everybody's had a chance here to speak. Is there anybody that wants to raise their hand that wants to provide additional feedback? Um, be happy to hear that. Um, I we got one. Yeah, I'll I'll have on Alberto. Alberto, if you could, there you go. Um, I would just like to say that. Um, thank you and. 
if we're talking about noise, um, there's baseball courts, and when you hit a ball with a bat, that is louder than skating. And yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Alberto. So I guess as far as the comment goes, um, Jackson, I don't know if, if you have yeah. anything specifically to add um, from here. Um, but I was thinking about why well, I, I did want to mention that we are going in ground. And so hopefully, you know, we are going to be in keeping with everything that is, is set out in the EIR. And it, it benefits the skate park as well to go in ground because we don't want to build perimeter walls because it just uses up money that could be used on the interior of the skate park. So um, we're lucky that the site does have like a gentle slope to it and that we can take advantage of those grades to make the different stair sets and some of the transition elements. Um, so I don't think it should be an issue to um, keep the skate park as an in-ground skate park. Yeah, and I know just to jump on top of that, Jackson, and I, I see Scott has his hand up um, for comment next. I know that's a huge concern of ours. And, and I think we've harped on this a little bit over the past year in just the, the huge difference in a temporary skate park versus a permanent skate park and how those are designed, built, um, function, all of that. So I know we're really cognizant of, of the mitigation measures in the EIR. I know that Jackson, um, and I have, have been through it, looked at it, and, and I, I think it's always hard with the concept to see exact, you know, where the exact grade is, but I know we're very aware of that, and, and I would expect some um, additional trees as mitigation, uh, mitigation measures on what I think is technically the east side of the property in some way to help dampen some sound and, and any, any issues that could come from that. So we are aware of that, and that's a, a, one of our primary concerns for sure. And Brittany, will so, you unmute Scott? There we go. Yeah, I did. I did. Thank you. So we go back to the slide just previous, please. So speaking about the expense, um, I just want to make sure everybody is aware. So I'm going to be putting in a wall. So uh, let's go to the top left for a second where the DG meets the yeah, right there, uh, where the DG meets the grass, more to the right. So the DG runs along, uh, you know, east to west or left to right on the, on the screen up at the top side, you know, towards the ocean, towards the water side. No, right, yeah, right there, right there. So I have a wall that's going to go in there that's roughly six feet tall, not to exceed. It'll come from left to right. And when it gets to the street, it'll turn and it'll go down towards the shed over there. So there's that's the property line there. So I'll be taking care of that wall. So there's no expense for the city, uh, Jesse, for you guys, because I've already put the other wall in. And then this wall will continue all the way up and it'll connect with that other wall that you can't see. Uh, because our well, maybe you can our pictures are in the way but either way there's that whole curve there's a wall that I'm going to put in so there's no expense from the city which leaves this whole you know circumference here in this uh, right here looking you know right uh, just directly behind the baseball field that curvature right there that's going to be you know if you said if you wanted it open to the street and minimize cost on the wall that would be a street level and you would walk in there or you could walk in over there but that's my one comment there. And if you go back to the bowl, to the other shot where the bowl is, and when I was making a comment about taking a picture right here. So maybe you want to take this bowl and skew it clockwise a little bit, because because if you shoot it, if you were taking a picture uh, directly to the upper left hand corner, you're really going to be looking against the wall. So the so these kids aren't going to get some epic shot with the ocean in the background of the sky. But if you skewed that bowl more counterclockwise towards the baseball field a little bit, you know, to the left of the baseball field, like, uh, you know, kind of left of third base up there, if you will. Yeah, this, at, I, I, these aren't interactive, are they? But if you skewed that more clockwise, mm -hmm. then they could take pictures looking, um, you know, to the Southwest, if you will, and get a pretty great shot. Because now that you mentioned the wall, I just know, so you know that there's a wall right there behind it. So, I think it'd mm -hmm. be best if it was skewed. And if it doesn't interrupt, if you're not, if they're not skating to jump into it, and it's just a matter of just jumping down into it, then you could skew it and they wouldn't lose any skateability, but they'd have a better picture. I mean, it's all about the great shot, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We do have, have <clears throat> the advantage of the slope again, 
right now from where the deck of yeah. the bowl is down to the bottom corner exactly. of the of the property there it's dropping more than yes. eight feet so it's descending. at a so certain it point back. it will disappear which would be nice um right. but yeah for part of it we will have to be mindful of the of the wall that you're putting in there and make sure that we take advantage of that vista i can uh... I can send you the wall diagram and you can drop it into your rendering so they can really see what it's going to be like. Cause I think you'll see what I'm talking about. If you, if you did skew it and it is a descending towards the colder sack, that's a pretty great shot of water and into nowhere land out there, which would be pretty nice, especially when very, these, very nice. if they're hanging out in the air like that, that would be kind of cool. Cool. And Jesse, one more thought, if I'm still on the, um, in our in our NOD, we do have trees on the opposite side of the wall, all the way down that main driveway. Not right there, but more to the left of the image that you can't see. So there's a good there's a good amount of mitigation with noise right there, just for the driveway of House Five. So I'm not that concerned about that section. That'll be nice. Maybe we add a another couple of trees down here at the bottom side to help uh, for noise factor if need be. Yep. I think it's great, guys. Very, very happy to see this. Are any other hands up? I see Brody has his virtual hand up. Brody, you want back in this? How about instead of a wall, you put a fence, kind of like Westlake, how Westlake surrounded by like a fence, you know? I think a fence would work just as good as a wall. Yeah, I think I think in and correct me if I'm wrong, Jackson. I think I think what you're referring to more is we were putting it below grade to help to keep from building walls that you would have to you know, you'd have to actually like build a concrete wall up for you know a ramp or or some kind of vertical you know to vertical element to like skate up or skate around, right? Mm -hmm. More is more versus like putting a full wall. I, up, I think was more your I more think. your point. I think Brody was talking about the perimeter wall that yeah. we were just talking about having the views over. Yeah. Um, and it being a fence or not, I don't think that's probably within our control. <laughs> but um, we, I do think, can position the bowl and use the slope and everything, and it, um, it won't be a factor. I think it, right? I think Brody was not worried about the walls in the skate park. He was talking about the perimeter fence. Yeah. Is that right? Brody, is that is that accurate? Do you want to unmute yourself there? Yeah. I was thinking like instead of a wall, like put a fence. Instead of having to move the whole bowl, I think a fence would be easier, but I know the wall would come right down to the point right there where the kind of the sidewalk meets that DG at the north part. That's the probably the general area. Um, so the wall wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily keep going all the way around, just to, to clarify there. And I see Scott. Yeah, Scott. Has, so has, has so I just, I, I think it's important to, to, to explain to everybody, Jesse, from your point of view. My, my point of view on this park is not to oppose this park. I like this park. I bought this property knowing the park would be there. I paid for this EIR and I donated a million dollars towards this park. And I think all the kids and these other children and, and teenagers and adults need to understand that I'm not here to oppose the park. I'm here to make sure the park is the best park it could be for them. And I don't skate, I have no, no dog in this fight, period. Or maybe they understand, maybe they don't. My goal is to make sure, sorry guys, my goal is to make sure that, that the neighbors that live in these homes get the same um, the same respect that any neighbor would get. So I'm here to make sure that it can be the best park it can be. And if I have to buy trees to help reduce the noise, I'll do that. The wall is there, not as a fence, it's a wall because that property happens to be the backyard and a guest house area for another house in that corner, which they can't see, which I think it's important that I send you the drawing so you can plot it so when the, when the kids are looking at it, they can see it because they'll visualize that very quickly. So, and when I bring up a point about skew in the bowl, it's not to, um, as you stated, the noise factor is below grade. So there's no noise factor to deal with. Now I'm thinking of, and I, you know, they don't know me, but I've directed for 17 years commercials for a living. So I'm thinking about an epic shot. And if you skew the bowl, you're looking at skyline and crazy clouds and, and ocean. And it's way better than looking at a wall. 
there will be a wall because that's that's a backyard and there's security and that's it's not a fence it's definitely going to be a wall and i and i want to make sure that they don't go wow well, where'd the wall come from you know so skew in the bowl is 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 to give them it, it, in my opinion is to make it better for them so um i mean i'm sure we'll work through this i just i'm not here to to be uh adversarial across the board i'm trying to um to help the process yeah and i know the you know i kind of like we mentioned earlier in the meeting this this is a concept you know we don't have every single detail of every single thing that's in um or that's that's actually out there or will be out there um but i do know that we can take those you know the schematics and, and put that in and then jackson is able to show it um in a 3d model where you can rotate and actually see you know how the wall would look with it in there um, as these plans kind of develop and, and really get moving. So um, I do appreciate, you know, Brody and Scott and everybody chiming in with the, or bringing their thoughts um, regarding kind of the long-term stuff. I, it's tough because this is a concept, right? So we're trying to, to think of what things would look like long-term and we're just not, we'll get mm -hmm. there. We're just not quite there yet, but I appreciate those thoughts. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea. Well, we can add the wall and everything to our 3D model so we can get the full view of what everything's going to be like and make sure we work within um, the parameters. And it seems like it should all work fine. See, Don has uh, his hand up. I'm, we have one other uh, first. Yeah, Zach, did you still have a comment? What? Yeah, one last question. Um, are there going to be lights or no? No, so there will not be lights. Um, that's, I mean, the whole, the entire park doesn't have lights because of our light ordinance. So um, it, there will not be any lights. Okay, thanks. And then Don. Yeah, I understand that this is a concept plan. I just want to comment that, uh, you know, 20 years ago or so when I was uh, uh, designing uh, parks and facilities, I wish I could get plans this good for the final iteration and the presentation to the decision makers. It is, it is very well done. Um, and it, but going back to it being a concept, I, I understand that uh, right now you're soliciting community input and it's malleable design. But, uh, you know, Jesse, when you do get to the point where things are starting to gel and, uh, and your constituents have, have got to the point where they're saying, you know, this is the way that they really want it to be. For those high points, the, uh, some of the ramps and the, uh, 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 that are at the higher elevation, if um, we could get some cross sections of those uh, when you get to that point so that we can ensure that those are in fact uh, at or below grade um, as uh, was originally envisioned for the skate park, that would be very helpful for us in regards to our analysis and our support. Yeah, and I, I think um, I'll probably speak for Scott, I know we had a lot of conversation about the height, the height of the temporary skate park. And I think when you see it visually, I think it looked a little bigger than it was, but we actually went out and measured it and, and you know, we're, I think we're really big on, on doing what we say we're gonna do. You know, and I, I think we, we did that with the temporary skate park and we will definitely do that with this. So we're happy to share that info and make sure that everybody has it um, because we're, we're not interested in going off, off the grid on this. We wanna make sure that it's done right. I appreciate that, I do. <laughs> Was any there other anyone comments? that had? I don't see anyone else, Jesse. So I just I want to I want to number one thank everybody um, for for coming, being a part of this, um, giving their feedback, and and I know that we're at the very beginning of this, so we're going to have a lot more. We have a, a lot more a lot more meetings and, and areas where, where you can comment. And so I would, I would really urge the group here and, and to make sure that you uh, tell friends or people who were not able to participate via Zoom, but may watch the meeting um, on YouTube or, or, or just you know couldn't make the meeting but are able to watch it and want to comment to please fill out the survey. Um, let us know if you have questions. Uh, go to our skate park website malibucity.org slash skate park we, we put everything there we update everything we um 
we keep that's where we go first when we're going to provide updates. So I would really urge everybody to make sure that you take the time to fill out uh, that survey when it comes out later this week. And then um, if you want, you can tune in again at six o'clock here on YouTube where we're going to have another another meeting very similar to this. It'll have a lot of the same info, but there might be different comments um, that you'll hear from people. But uh, Jackson, do you have anything else to add? Bring in. Just want to thank everybody for showing up and participating. Um, we really appreciate it and it'll make the park better. And yeah, check out the survey. And if you have other thoughts or ideas that come to you later or things that you want to see, um, let us know. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm sure that uh, I think we know most people here or we're all very familiar with most of the people in this meeting. So we'll definitely see you again soon. And like I said, you'll see that survey later this week. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Welcome everybody. We are going to get started here in just a few minutes. There's a couple other people scheduled to be here. We're gonna um, give them another minute or two and then we'll get started.
Okay, everyone, I hope you can hear me. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So um, I wanna first just say welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you to everybody who is participating via Zoom and then also anybody who's watching on YouTube. Um, I know we have a lot of people that were interested in this meeting. So uh, we're very excited to have everybody here. Uh, if you don't know me or you can't see the title above my slide, uh, my name is Jesse Bobbitt. I'm the Community Services Director here with the City of Malibu. And we're really excited to have everybody here for our first public design meeting for our permanent skate park. So um, you'll see several staff members in the meeting, uh, Kristen Riesgo, our deputy director, uh, Kate Gallo and Brittany Sally Mua, who are also from the community services department. And then Jackson Statzel, who is from California Skate Parks, who is the design firm that was selected for this project. So, um, Jackson is going to enter. Jackson is going to lead the discussion portion, or most of the discussion portion of this meeting. Uh, but I did want to take a second and go over some of the meeting parameters, so you know just kind of what to expect from the meeting, uh, the skate park project itself, and then our time frame moving forward. So you can see uh, today's meeting. I already mentioned Jackson and California Skate Parks, who uh, is our selected design consultant for this project. Uh, we, we are going to have the discussion and we're going to allow, we're going to give uh, Jackson some time to uh, basically present uh, some different elements and things uh, common in skate parks and then also give you some, some layout and, and design of the skate park and what it could potentially be. And so uh, the meeting itself is expected to take about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and during the discussion, we're going to give each person three minutes to speak. So after Jackson wraps up the presentation, uh, we'll actually allow each person to speak. And I think with the number of people we have, we'll be able to come back and have additional discussion if um, there's additional questions as time allows. So um, next slide here. So real quickly, if, if you're not familiar with our skate park project, uh, you can see the location of the temporary skate park, which is currently across from Malibu Bluffs Park uh, on the left, which is shown there in gray. And then you can see the area for our permanent skate park where the permanent skate park will, will go over on the right side of the map in yellow. And so one thing I wanna say is that uh, while that actual area is where the skate park will go, the skate park itself will not be the full size of that yellow block. It'll actually just fit somewhere within that. So that's one of the things that we'll, we'll talk about and get into tonight. Um, but again, the, the permanent skate park will not be that entire yellow area, which I know some people probably wish that it was. Um, so real quick, our time frame for the project. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, the design process, which we're currently in. And so we have tonight's meeting, which is design meeting number one. And this process is expected to take about six months to complete. And after we finish tonight's meeting, you'll be able to go to our website and complete a community survey to basically provide additional feedback outside of this meeting. So we're going to get a lot of feedback tonight from those that are here, I'm sure. And then we will also take the feedback from the community survey. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for you to give your feedback and talk about what you want in the skate park, which is um, I think the whole part of the public design process is having lots of different venues and, and opportunities for you to, to provide your feedback. So we'll have that community survey out for roughly five weeks. And then after that, we'll compile that information and we'll have uh, design meeting number two, which will be later this year. And some before that and some, some meetings after that, but we'll also be taking it to the Parks and Recreation Commission, our Public Works Commission, our Planning Commission, and our city council. So there will be lots of opportunities for you to um, provide your feedback. So finally, after we do the after the design process is complete, we'll start the build phase of this project. Uh, fundraising for that, we'll have to do some fundraising to, to make sure that we have enough money to actually complete the permanent skate park. So we will actually start physically start the building process and the RFP process, or I should say the construction bidding process for that um, once we know that we have funding secured for that. So um, we do have a little bit of work to do there before we start the build, which we expect to take about a year. And then our, our hope is that if everything goes smoothly, that in 2022, we'll have a permanent skate park in place. 
So finally, I've mentioned the community survey as one of the additional opportunities to provide feedback for this meeting. Um, and, and after you see the, the work that we're going to present tonight. Um, also, if, if you're just, you can't get everything out you want in the survey or you have additional questions, you can certainly email us those comments to skatepark at malibucity.org, which is shown there. And then I mentioned design meeting too, there's another opportunity coming up in late 2020 and then those commission and council meetings. But one thing I want to stress is that, you know, we want everybody to feel comfortable providing feedback and, and letting us know what they like, what they don't like. And there's just going to be several opportunities for that. So, uh, but if you remember anything from this meeting, please remember that you can, you can go to malibucity.org slash skatepark. And all of this information will be there, whether you comment on how they, or you want to email us or, you know, schedules for meetings as they, as we actually schedule the date of the meeting, things like that. All this info, the survey will all be on our website. So if you do have any questions, you'll always know, hey, I can at least go there to find the information that I need. And we update that regularly. So it's really important that, that you check back because that's the first spot we'll generally update when we have new news. So with that, I want to go ahead and bring in Jackson from California Skate Parks and can jump on here and, and I will let him share his screen with you. He has a little bit more in-depth well, presentation than I do. And then after Jackson completes his presentation, we'll allow everybody to comment and go from there. So thank you. Jackson, Jesse. I don't know if you can grab the screen or not. You have to wait for me to let's see. Oh, okay. Well, welcome everybody. I just want to first say thank you for showing up and participating. Um, I think this is a really big opportunity to impact what we're going to do for the skate park here. Um, just to give you an idea of what we're going to be going through and what I'm going to be talking about and what we're going to be doing is I'm basically here to absorb as much as I can from all of you and get feedback and ideas and hear, hear from you on what you want to get out of your skate park. So I'm basically just going to show a few examples, talk a little bit about who we are, and then we're just going to get right into looking at a couple of uh, concepts that we put together. Uh, I do want to mention that these are just concepts based on uh, the parameters that we have. So what we know um, from an environmental impact report that was done, the EIR study, uh, is that we can do a 12,500 square foot skate park. And um, knowing that we're trying to maximize that square footage the best that we can. Um, so we've come up with just kind of two versions to look at. Um, I do want to stress that we don't have to pick one or the other. That's not really what we're doing. They're mostly meant to kind of be like, these are examples. Um, this is something that it could look like. We're giving, giving it a shot, but we really want to hear your feedback and want to know what you would like to see in the skate park. Um, let's see. How come I'm not scrolling here? Oh, my thing is frozen. Just give me one second. Maybe if I. Not letting me scroll. Sorry. Just give me a second here and see if I can get this to go. That's weird. Uh oh. Sorry. I don't know what happened to my PowerPoint here. It's not scrolling. Giving me that, but then no controls. Let me try something really quick. Just bear with me for one second here. Well, this isn't that cool so far. Sorry, just one second, I'll get this back up. 
just restarting the PowerPoint program. Okay, let's see. Can you try and make me presenter again, Jesse, if that's possible? Yeah, I'll do that let's right see now. Let's see how I can grab it. In just one second here. Is it showing? Alex, if you're on, is there, I don't see any issue with it on his end, do you? Yeah, hold on one second. Try it again. Yeah, now try that again. See if you can share your screen. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, um, so I'll skip through some of this. California skate parks, who we are. Um, some of you may know us, some of you may not. Um, I'll just mention some of the things. We are usually known for designing things like the Vans Park Series or Street League or X Games Do Tour, some of these contest stuff. Uh, for some people that's exciting, for some people it's less exciting because they may not want those that type of park or that, you know, a truly street plaza like what we're looking at here or an all flow concept. Um, I guess I bring it up because I just want you to know that we can do anything with this project. We can take it in any direction. We don't have a specific agenda. Um, we want this skate park to be, you know, in its identity to be just for Malibu and what everybody tells us that they want in their skate park. In general, what our job is gonna be is just to make sure that, you know, the spacing, the specs, everything is done correctly. Typically, um, you know, th through a process like this, it's not, we're not gonna end up with a uh, park at the end that's all street or all transition. They almost always end up being a nice mixture. Um, so again, just for us, we wanna make sure that there's something for everybody and there's different types of terrain and that if you're showing up for the first day ever, you can start somewhere and you can progress, whether it's street or tranny, um, and then you can work your way up. And then if you're coming back for the thousandth time ever, that there's still something that's interesting, there's still things that are challenging. Um, and those in a, in a skate park are the practical application of those things is having different size stuff. We wanna make sure there's small stair sets flat ledges, flat rails, if you're into the street skating. And then if we're talking about um, tran tranny and bowls, then it needs to be deeper depths, different types of uh, features throughout. So I'm just gonna breeze through some of these examples. After I go through this and we look at the concepts, I can go back to anything. So if there's anything that somebody wants to go and look at or refer to or anything, um, once I get through this, we'll be able to go back to anything. But these are just kind of some different examples of either mixed skate parks, all street, mostly tranny, snake, and uh, everything in between. Some of this is just related to the survey that we're gonna have that's gonna be available after the meeting. And it's just gonna, basically be a questionnaire about different types of features and different types of layouts and the two concepts that, you, that we present. So you have the opportunity to, if, if you don't wanna speak up or if you have ideas later, if you wanna study the, the designs that we put together um, and then come back with some feedback or you get an idea, you're gonna be able to submit that along with the survey and it's gonna to refer to some of these things that we're looking at here, different types of ledges or flow, different types of bowl, bowls, backyard bowls, pockets, extensions, all this stuff that um, is gonna end up in the skate park. 
So yeah, these are really just to give you ideas. If little food for thought is all. But we might as well get into the actual concepts here. So this is the site which I'm, <clears throat> which Jesse already showed you, and I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, this is mainly to show kind of what 12,500 square feet looks like on the site. Um, and also to give you an idea that some of the things that we're doing in here and having these landscaping areas is mostly just to spread the skate park out, make it feel more natural. And uh, we can end up using them for uh, capturing water and cleaning it. Um, but really for that 12,500 square feet, we just wanna make sure that we're maximizing it and we, we wanna make it you know, as full bodied of a skate park as possible. And uh, these landscape areas are not counting against us in any way in terms of that square footage that we've been allocated. So we're able to grow the skate park a little bit when we put some landscaping in there. Um, just so for the, this first concept, compared to the other concept, we're showing one version that is a little more um, of a mix and a little more street heavy. And the other concept is a, has a little more transition to it. For both of the concepts right now, we are including a backyard bowl here, um, unless that's something that nobody wants to see, or we can talk about the different shapes that are possible, but really uh, it's something that we're including because it doesn't take up a tremendous amount of space. It is a cool iconic piece and we can put it down the slope in this case and have it be an area where the water is gonna be behind it. And it's a very cool vantage. Um, for the rest of this concept, A here, like I said, this is a little more street heavy concept, but it is still gonna have a mix of different size transition in here. Uh, we wanna make sure that there's little quarter pipes and you can see up at the top, there's um, a mini ramp section there towards the entrance along with some flat ledges some different sized curved ledges in this concept here towards the entryway. And then just a, a variety of different stair heights here. Got the quarter pipe grind over kind of a main street area with some flat ledges, kickers, the long rail, some little down rails, out ledges, a little, obviously it's more <clears throat> plaza on, on this side. Um, another different size stair set in here with some small hubbas and a bumped rail, some transition, and then it goes down into a deeper bowl pocket area with pool coping. We got pole jam in here, A-frame, hip. We're just kind of making sure we want to check as many boxes as we can of different types of features and um, just pack it in here and make sure the park has flow, uh, works well. I'm trying to think if there's any other notes I can in here, but I'm happy to go back through it if anybody wants to look at a certain area or talk about something. This is uh, concept B. This one is a little more focused on transition with a kind of a flowing uh, mini ramp snake style run at, into a flow area with some bigger extensions. Still got the, the bowl pocket um, and then a kind of a, a smaller street area or just because this one is more split between transition and street, but still has hubbas, rails, stairs, step up gap, smaller rail here, as well as some of the flatland stuff in the entrance. Here's another view here. Um, the backyard bowl is an opportunity to talk about different depths or, or transitions or shapes or anything that we want to get into. Like I said, these are examples of what we wanted to show what you know either a, a little more heavy on the street or more transition uh, forward design that we could do for 12,500 square or square feet um, and just get some feedback or thoughts or ideas I have just kind of a couple images to be able to compare and look at the two of these side by side to see what's the same, what's different. And yeah, really we, you know, in your time that you have to, we'll take anything. You don't really have to talk about the two concepts if you want, if you want 
if you just have general ideas or thoughts or types of features, or if you do want to um, speak to the specific concepts, we're really open to any and all feedback. And that's kind of what we're here for right now is just to hear your thoughts. So I think with that, we'll open it up. What do you think, Jesse? Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Um, Brittany, if you will, I, um, as we go, just call off uh, maybe the next two or three that are in line and we'll give everybody a, a few minutes to, to give their thoughts on the concepts and, and some of the things you'd like to see. Absolutely. So first up, we have Chris Wyatt, um, followed by Finn Murphy and Damon Way. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, well, yeah, thanks for, for having me. I'm glad this worked out. Really excited about the project. Uh, with design in mind, you know, I work with a ton of skaters, and I think diversity is important, like, like uh, the gentleman was saying, uh, the mo you know, different, try to check off all the, bo the boxes. Um, typically, I see skaters, they look, they every, the intro skater starts with a flat ground area. Now, this is one thing I'd like people to think about because uh, what happens when kids learn to skateboard, they're using these flat grounds in between obstacles, and sometimes that can cause collisions between advanced and, and beginner or intro skaters. A cool idea would be to have kind of a flat ground area at, at one side or the other, you know, something similar to like in Santa Monica, they have the Santa Monica bike campus. This is an area designated for people to learn to ride a bike. You don't want them on the bike path right off the bat. And it really can be a big barrier to entry for a lot of skaters uh, and even intimidating for many, you know, adults, girls, ages, whatever it might be. So it's cool to have really like kind of a designated area for flat ground skating that's not gonna clash. Uh, I also really like the idea in, in some of these designs you know, flow is a big thing. And I, I see the flow on the lines in the middle of the park, which is great. One cool thing is always to try to have like a line around the park. On um, this concept A that I see, they, you know, they do a good job for like, like 75% of it you can get around and then it kind of stops right up top. And it would be cool if it just, there's kind of an ongoing little pathway just for, to ride around. I think that really adds flow to a park. It can connect the whole thing. Um, when it comes to the pool, the big classic pool, I know it's iconic, but I, I think it's probably the least skated feature. Uh, I think bowls are important, but maybe staying away from the pool style, like an old school pool, doesn't get as much use, so you can't do as much compared to like the all park style bowl. Um, and if, if that gentleman who was just talking maybe knows what I'm talking about, like that Salt Lake City, Utah uh, skate park you guys did. Yeah, kind of like that, where it's a bowl, but it's really all level bowl. Like there's a lot of different like things to skate in the bowl. I think that's a lot more fun for skaters rather than just that, that pool bowl is, is limited in, in its nature and I know it's iconic I know it's classic but I go to a lot of skate parks and that bowl is empty for most of the day like I think having maybe that blend of the street all park area even if it's heavier on the street side like maybe concept a but instead of that that swimming pool bowl doing more of like a, an all like an all park bowl will be really nice I think um Further than that, with just design of ramps, keep in mind, really, it goes flat ground, then there's flat ramp. People like to do, go up to fakies, back and forth on the flat ramp. Uh, the, new, the, the temporary park has a good job with these flat ramps. Learning to drop in, it's important to have kind of a, that, that beginner or even medium quarter pipe size where people are learning their stalls and drops and pop, pop out. Um, and then the rest comes easily with the advanced stuff. Now, one thing I just really want to focus, like have people to think about is going to be the amenities while you're off the skateboard. You know, we, we focus so much on designing these really cool skate parks, 
but then they can be hard to use because we don't have just like the little comforts when you're off the board. So like, it's really cool when they, like nowadays how you guys are all integrating the, the park, the, the, the garden with the, the, the skate park, but really just keep in mind, I mean, having benches, having seating area, areas for people when they're off the board. I can't tell you how many parks I go to and I sit on the ground because I have no, there's nowhere to sit. You know, Westlake, their park, you go up there, there's, there's like two picks, there's four seats. You know, and that fills up very quickly. And so, you know, think about how parents are going to come with their children. They're going to want to sit comfortably to watch, to do homework maybe with other siblings. Again, having that, like, that's similar to the Santa Monica bike campus, an area where kids can, like, maybe be on their scooters, get younger siblings, while the older siblings in the actual park. So kind of, I think designing with the intent that it's more of an athletic facility, you know, seating area for parents, shade coverage is really important. Chris, I, um, as Chris, well, you know, simple things, water fountain Chris, and, and restrooms. Okay, thank you. Um, Jackson, if you have any comments to that. Sure, yeah, I think those that's great feedback. Um, uh, I agree with a lot of <clears throat> what you're saying. We do have, in these designs, we, we made sure that a flatland area was near the entrance. Um, and I know Jesse probably has some things, some comments for some of the other things you said where things like seating and these amenities are for sure going to be part of this process and are things that we've been looking at and considering where the nice spaces, I mean, the site is incredible and there's a lot of opportunities to uh, make really cool kind of hangouts and watching around either, you know, different parts of the street or the bowl or what have you. And I agree there, there needs to be a variety of sizes, learning how to drop in on a small quarter pipe, having bigger features. Uh, we're, we're making sure that we include those kinds of things in here. And I, I appreciate your comments. Okay. Finn next and then Damon and then Caution. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, first off, I would like to start saying, like, I would say, like, a pool, or maybe not even a pool, but, like, a bowl is, like, very important, I would say. Um, like, I skate, I've also skated, like, basically every single bowl in SoCal. Like, I've skated today at a different skate park than yesterday and then the day before, like, and I would say a bowl is like one of the most important things actually. Um, I agree with, with uh, the last person about, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but about like having a park style bowl. I feel like a flow bowl, like maybe the one at Vans Outdoor, like CATF or something like that. Like obviously we don't have as much room, but on a smaller scale maybe. Um, I think that would be like really good and important. Um, and then also that's like the main thing that I would want. And then with the concepts like A and B, I would say this might sound a bit confusing, but if right here looking at this photo, if you could cut it right down the middle, I would say the right side on concept A looks like if you had the right side of concept A and the left side of concept B, that that would that seems like it would be pretty awesome. And then, oh yeah, so I like really want to say that a bowl would be like awesome because like for the more advanced skaters, I would say um for I know there's a couple people I could say their names like Koa me like I know Tashin who will speak in a bit would want somewhere where we can just like boost backside airs and that's always a very fun place to like park bowls are always very fun so yes I like to stress that a lot um and also like as far as the concepts go I think it looks really fun um I like the like euro gaps and like step up bars I think or like uh bumped bars are things that a lot of kids in the temporary design meetings were saying like that 
those were really important. And yeah, I would say the concepts look pretty good. So that's all. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Finn. Yeah, I know you <clears throat> skate all terrain. Um, and yeah, we would, I have those bowls that you're talking about, like the, the outdoor one at HB and the TF, the, those type flow bowls are great. Um, for us, we are trying to maybe integrate some of those, you know, like kind of have almost like a flow bowl that's incorporated into here. I think we could look at doing a, a separate flow bowl. The only reason we haven't in this one, because we showed some example, or I showed some examples in the um, PowerPoint was just because of the size, like you talked about. We've, it's not, I'm not saying it's impossible. We can certainly, there are a lot of different sizes and stuff that we can do. So I think we should look into that. It may at some point be something that we have to, you know, maybe the, the street gets a little bit bigger and then we can do a flow bowl um, that has, you know, that's more than just like a backyard bowl or more than just like a mini ramp bowl. And it has some of the things that you're talking about that you can find in some of those bigger flow bowls. So I think it's a good comment and it's definitely, we appreciate your feedback. Next up, we have Damon and Tashin, followed by Koa and Sky. Yeah, hi. Um, this is uh, Damon and Tashin. Um, yeah, I think both um, both comments or both sets of comments uh, prior to this um, were good. Um, so the the thing that 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 I um, think about that makes a park really fun is speed, being able to go fast, being able to connect the whole park and draw a line through the whole thing without you know, pushing or, or um, having to get off your board and, and, and move over things to get to the next section. Um, I'm thinking about some of the parks that I visit up in San Francisco quite a bit, like Fremont and Potrero. Um, Potrero is, is, is really fun because of the speed element and it really helps and teaches kids how to skate you know, really fast um, which is fun. Um, and there, Fremont, they have this whole kind of uh, snake bowl section with hips um, and things where you can really, um, you know, float airs and um, go pretty fast through it. And then it kind of opens up into a bigger bowl at the end. Um, so I was thinking um, being able to go fast, pump the park, kind of a snake run-ish throughout it where you can connect sections. Um, I think a bowl is, is really important, but to, to both your points earlier, I think something that's more of a hybrid shape um, the Chili Bowl at Petrero and SF's really fun. Um, Clover Bowl at uh, Poods is really good. Um, and doing something that has um, some pockets um, and that isn't just a basic kidney, something that's you know more creative and more interesting. And maybe that connects um, you know to a different part of the park. Maybe a, a snake run or a flow section uh, flows into it. Um, and then the other thing um, is a lower a lower handrail on the stairs, you know, something that gives kids sort of an, like a sort of a middle place to start versus going for a full full height handrail. Um, first time they're going for like a handrail section over stairs. Um, shade and tables, um, super needed. Not enough of those at skate parks as mentioned earlier. And I think um, that's all I got. Tashin, Tashin, you want to say something? Say something real quick. Um, <laughs> it'd be also fun if they had like um, some gaps you can clear and stuff, like as you're going through and stuff. Like like street gaps. Um, or or like channel tranny. Yeah, like <clears throat> basically a hip you just go straight over almost, or like. He actually loves. Oh, okay floating parks, ollies and gaps and things. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I think coming back to my first comment, speed, being able to pump the park, you know, fast would, would be really great to connect it all. Yeah, speed, flow. I mean, I'm, uh, I know who you are, Damon. And so when you're talking, I'm just listening and I really appreciate your feedback. And oh, of course. I know you guys know what you're talking about. And yeah, I think being able to and I know the skate parks you're referring to. So, um, yeah, making sure that you can go fast and speed, flow, and progression, some cool gaps. Yeah, and is there, is, do we have the room to, you know, if you, 
did what Finn said, if you took one half of one and one half of the other and use the area right now that has the kidney bowl, is there enough room and footage there to really build that out to be a lot more creative in, in its design? There's more space than we have the ability to build. So like the whole site um, is giant. It's more than 40,000 square feet. We're being limited right now by the EIR study that was done that said that we can build a skate park up to 12,500 square feet. So we're maximizing that space. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't borrow some from the main body and make a separate flow bowl that does have, you know, some more character and, and more like having some hips and not just the traditional kidney shape where, where it can be a like open, open flow bowl. Yeah, that'd be cool. Is, is the, is the green sections inside the design also counted square footage? It's not. Okay. Yeah. So we we're putting those in there and stretching it, but the, yeah, the square footage is just the concrete skatable area. Yeah. All those little paths, those walk paths, make them pumpable. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good buy. Everything should be skatable. Um, but yeah, I think that it's still very possible. Like I said, these were examples that we wanted to show. We we're trying to do a bigger main body skate park and then show a version with the bowl off to the side. But I think certainly it could be possible to do a separate flow bowl or at least incorporate some of those same features that you would find in that flow bowl, some, some better hips some bigger extensions um, within, the, within the park and have it flow and kind of work like a snake. I mean, we're trying to make parts of these pump and end in a deep end, similar to how a snake run would work in these concepts, but we have the ability to go down in the ground um, so we can work on some ideas like that. Next up, we have Koa and Sky. Koa and Sky, are you guys there? It looks like they may have left the meeting. We'll see them. They're here and they just unmuted, but. Okay. 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 Cohen style, I'll come back to you guys um, later. Um, next up, we have Hamish, followed by Javier. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Good. Hello? Hey, Hamish. Hello, we can hear you. All right, cool. Hey, um, on, on this whole deal, no dead ends, man. If you look at the uh, southeast corner, man, that all needs to be bucketed back in, going with what Damon's saying, going with what Finn's saying. We need a big, we need a big fat place to go super fast. The kiddies can have their, their kiddie zone and their low rails and that, you know, on the uh, southwest side and all that, but the whole north, and going into the uh, southwest corner should all be hipped up and big walls and going as fast as you can, man. I, I wanna, I wanna huck some turns, dude. And and this whole thing about the the bull, let's let's get some warrior. Let's get some warrior in this. Malibu is a community of of gate hopping pool skaters. We've been doing it all summer. Let's get some real pool in there. But, but like Damon said, let's not just do a basic kidney. Let's get some pockets in there. Let, let's make this thing fast and rad, dude. And, and like, I'm just looking at the design. There's a lot of dead end crisscross crashing going on. Like, like to back up the skate camp parasites, we, we need to avoid the crisscross crashing, man. But I'm all for just getting some fast lines. It looks like on that north side, you can keep all that in there. I like what Flynn said about keeping the, uh, the west half of concept A, I think super solid with the little mini pipe and the whole thing. In fact, I like concept A. It's just that whole south 
southeast side should be bucketed around so you can whip it in there and go and huck it right back up the deal and kind of divide the north thoroughfare into two lanes there and get some speed bumps in there and let's let's get jamming speed's the answer what's the question let's make these kids be warriors dude we have a tradition in this town of a badass skaters, dude. I don't want Elijah Burl showing up at our skate park and being like, this is lame, dude. I don't <laughs> want these all these dudes coming back to Malibu and being like, what did you guys build, dude? We want the kids leaving Malibu A-plus badasses so they can go up to the Pacific Northwest and just dominate, dude. Let's get Cody Lockwood scale going on here, okay? Okay. All right. I'm reading you. All right. Let's, let's, let's do it. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I, I appreciate all that. I'm I'm into it. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Javier followed by Takuji. Hello, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to say this is exciting uh, to even be part of this conversation. Thank you for involving uh, the community in, in these designs. Uh, I'm coming in from the perspective of an inline skater. It looks like I'm the only one. And I, every time I go to the temporary park, I'm always the only inline skater. Every time I go to an, any other uh, skate park, I'm the only inline skater. So uh, I just wanted to say that um, that's my perspective. Uh, although my daughter skateboards. Um, I just went to a skate park last week and I skated a spine for the first time and I thought it was super cool. And I, it'd, be, it'd be really neat to have something like, like that kind of an element in this Malibu skate park to have a spine um, with coping right in the middle. I think uh, the mini ramp of concept A is really cool for kids that are learning. They, they, they learn to drop in and they learn to come back in fakey or to learn how to turn. I think that's a really cool element of concept A. Um, one thing that I, that I think is important to have is round coping all around, like the temporary skate park that, that is there right now. Uh, some places, there, there's round coping. In some places, there's sharp, like square coping. And I, that, that square coping really bites. Like I, I've injured my leg a couple of times, just missing a grind. And um, yeah, I'm not sure why it's not round. One thing that I like about uh, concept A, I see this long rail uh, there on the ocean side of it. I think uh, those are cool for for inline skaters to have these long rail options. And then the handrail, I think it's really cool. I know for skateboarders, maybe a lower, maybe knee high rail would be good. But uh, for inline skaters, uh, like a, a nice, like hip height handrail would be really cool. Uh, I'm, I can't tell from here whether those quarter pipes have a full vert but it'd be really nice. I, I know some people have already mentioned having like tall obstacles that can, where people can generate speed. Uh, that would be really cool. And so having a quarter pipes with a full vert where you can get speed, but also air on the vert would be neat. And uh, about the bowl, uh, I, I like what people are saying that maybe if, if, if possible integrating like opening up the bowl. So it's not just a, a, an isolated feature of the park, but is, is connected to the rest of the park. Because uh, like somebody else said, when I go to parks like, um, like Moore Park, there's a, a bowl that's mostly empty all the time. But when they're connected, uh, it, it, it gets more use and it makes the whole park flow better. And one thing I wanted to ask is if there's going to be fencing or if it's going to be more of an open park like in Venice. Yeah, I think, yeah, I got you. Um, there will be fencing. Uh, it won't be open, unfortunately. Um, we do have to have the ability to close the skate park at times. So 
this is one thing I want to stress to the group is that um, you know this is just a first initial you know layout of what the skate park could be you know this is just a very initial uh, the, just the initial stages of it so as far as you know side amenities or fencing or things like that um, you know almost certainly the elements as far as um, landscape and things like that they're gonna they're gonna change they're gonna be adjusted um, they're mostly here visually and I think that's something that's really important to know with um, what we're doing. We're going to get to a lot of those things later on down the line. This is really about trying to get the design together and and start expanding from there. But yes, it will have fencing. We do know that. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we appreciate your comments. Um, I like a lot of what you're saying and appreciate it. I, well, the, only, the only point I was going to bring up just as far as round edging versus square edging is that it's usually just kind of for different tricks or a different experience. I mean, we tend to in parks do some round rails, some square rails, uh, transition often, you know, always has the round coping. Um, so typically there is gonna be a mix just because it's gonna be something that, you know, emulates real street environments where you do have more of a, a crisp edge. But I understand sometimes they can be um, kind of sharp. They should be grinded so that it's not like a true corner, a sharp corner, because um, that is pretty dangerous. Um, but just just wanted to give some feedback of that probably will be a variety of edging in there. Um, but I hear you and talking about the spines and the mini ramp and yeah, getting there. We do have some vert in here, getting some bigger uh, walls for higher speed. I appreciate the feedback, Javier. And our last speaker is Takuji. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, you know, I love everything California parks do. You know, we've skated many of them. I, I like the concepts, both A and B. Um, I like the fact of the B, uh, the zone that's closer to us, that's more uh, ch transition park. So maybe in the concept A, if you could weed out the street element and kind of make a hybrid of the two, that might be good. But I really like the half pipe section on the right hand side of the concept A. So if you can, I don't know if we're able to mix and match, but Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> definitely like that. But they're both incredibly. It's such a pleasure and you know honor to have something like this for community. But uh, you know, sounding what Javier said, I I really think the gate as well as you know the administrator, we'd love to see uh you know somebody with experience like somebody who worked down in Santa Monica up Cove or something. I you know they've been recently laid off and. You know, it's such great human resources for us to tap into. You know, I think there's people that work there over, you know, since the beginning, you know, and then I don't, I don't know if they found new jobs, but if we can bring somebody like that into our city and administer it so we have some, you know, they can help us create a culture that's healthy for everybody. You know, and that's kind of like our, my input here. Would be appreciate it. Thank you. Great. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah, and um, just to address one of your comments, at least we definitely can blend these concepts. Like I said, we're not <clears throat> just picking between them and all the things that we're hearing, the feedback, the ideas, this is it's what we're looking for. So we're trying to gauge what everybody wants and you guys are giving us some really nice stuff to work with. So uh, it really helps to, to have specific feedback and to have these ideas to be able to um, to build off of them. So just want to thank you all for everything that you've given us because it's, it's what we're after. I see we have a couple, I saw Hamish's hand up and just want to give everybody an opportunity if if you want to provide a, any more additional feedback, raise your hand and we're happy to try and squeeze you in. I think we have a little bit of time left here. So we can let Hamish, Hamish, I see his hand up first. Um, hey, I just uh, on the, on a more pr practical level is I just want to talk about uh, surfacing because we do get a lot of the coastal fog 
And, um, you know, that high gloss surfacing, you see it a lot of places like Stoner Park and stuff. I don't know if that's going to be conducive for environment. So I, I hope we can get more of a traditional surface mm -hmm. and also like big proponent of, of, of actual pool coping versus oh, yeah. the metal. I get the metal serves a purpose. And one thing that I hope we can keep away from in the design is any of that weird like brick stuff that they like to surface some of the walls with. It's kind of counterproductive, I think, but whatever, you know, kids like what they like. Those are my uh, three comments about surfaces and pool coping, pool coping, pool coping. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, um, Stoner Plaza is slippery. <clears throat> it actually was integral color concrete and stain and we found over time that certain colors that we use actually end up being more slippery, like some of the reds. It, it's kind of strange, but um, we will be mindful of that and definitely going to be pool coping in here and, as well as tile. Um, I understand the stamp, the stamp brick can be really, really strange. Some of the stamp textures, they're often like a little bit more rugged than they need to be. Um, so I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay, next up we have Chris followed by Finn. Hey, thanks. Uh, it's really great to hear all the skaters giving their input on this. Made me think of some other things, just, just two other points. Um, one, uh, if you really need to have a signature kind of ramp for the park, so to say, I mean, some skate parks around the country, around the world, you know, have like something that's unique about them. And it would be kind of cool to have something. And a lot of times this, you know, the, the something is very hard to skate, you know, not many people do, but something that just is really, that stands out, that's iconic and special, uh, that makes it, you know, one of a kind that people can talk about it and want to visit it. Um, so something that represents Malibu and that would be really neat to incorporate like a signature piece. And then um, the other thing, just talking about flow, I think that is just such a good point having flow. And even, yeah, if you can incorporate some of those pathways where it's pumpable in a way, like even on the, the entrance pathway, if it's possible to be a, not a pump track per se, maybe a pump track, but really like as they're entering, there could just be little lumps and bumps on the side that just, add for more fun and uniqueness. And that's all I got, thank you. Great ideas. Oh. Finn? Hi, um, I would also just like to add um, that depth in the bowl is very important. Like a little bit of like vert would be great. So we can do like airs and stuff. Um, so yeah, I just want to stress that a lot. And also I would like to say that a lot of like, I also agree with what Jackson was saying about how it's better to have some, um, like a mix of like square rails and circle rails and like all that. I like that there should be a mix of that and like pool coping and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say for now. So, cool. Thank you, Finn. Thanks, Finn. Javier. Hello, I just wanted to say that I uh, like the concept A uh, better. It has those street elements uh, with the rails in the middle in like a fun box, uh, but that that quarter pipe that is on the west side, like right behind the mini ramp, it's it, it almost seems to lead right into that central vegetated area. And um, so I thought that was kind of odd. I, I kind of like the width of the quarter pipe that's in the same place of concept B, because it, it just seems like mm -hmm. there's a lot more room to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mostly meant to <clears throat> be able to cross over from one side to the other, but I see what you like the extra space here. Right, you see like like uh, the, in concept B, uh, the yeah, if you can go back, uh, 
you would drop in and then there's like a little transition before the vegetated area instead of a, mm -hmm. just a hard ledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one, it's more of like a, a ledge over a gap. So it's more of a street obstacle, but yeah, I hear you. I appreciate that. It's a good, it's a good thought. Was there anyone else that had any other questions or comments? I well, I want right to, yeah, I think that's it too. I, I just want to, uh, again, thank you. Thank everybody for all the comments. I know, um, you know, seeing things fresh and hearing your thoughts is really, really good for us. It gives us a chance to really dive into to things that we can adjust and make better. And so there has been a lot of good feedback in this meeting. So um, I also want to touch base and just say, please be on the lookout. Um, I imagine we'll have it up by tomorrow, but for, for our community survey so that you can log on and put a lot of these thoughts on paper and give us this because we'll use those um, comments as we put get comments from people who weren't actually able to get into the meeting and, and verbalize the comments directly. Um, we'll piece all those together and start making, making revisions and changes to this. Uh, as the process starts to move forward. So again, if you know, if anything, please remember malibucity.org slash skatepark. That's our website where we'll have all this info. And even if you need to contact us and find something, if anything, if you make it to that website, you'll be able to find all that that info and get in contact with us if if, if you need anything. So um, um, Jackson, I don't know if there's anything else to add on your end, but uh, thank you for for you know, presenting this. And, and again, if, if you get a chance, um, make sure you fill out the community survey or email us directly and, and we'll make sure that we keep posting when additional meetings are coming up. So um, make sure you sign up for our skate park alerts if you haven't done so on our city website and you'll have all the info. Yeah, I just wanna thank everybody for coming. Um, we really value your feedback and we're gonna make the skate park epic and like none other that exists. So thank you for joining and giving us the great ideas. Okay, well, everybody, I hope you have a great night and we'll look forward to seeing you again at some of our upcoming meetings. Thank you.